Okay, so in today's RetroBat setup guide, we are taking a look at the infamous Amstrad GX4000. And I'm going to call this edition the Freelance Edition. But I'm going to get into that shortly. So in this setup guide, then I'm going to talk about what the Amstrad GX4000 was. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you around the world watching this. You wouldn't have heard of this system but we're going to look at video settings which type of game file extensions it requires and just take a look at some video settings to really give you a nostalgic feel to it so if you want to learn more about amstrad gx 4000 or you had one of these as a kid check this one out <laughs> Okay, so before I start today's Retro Bat in Amstrad GX 4000 setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And also remember that I have an entire playlist of almost 90 separate Retro Bat guides, so it's quite likely at this point, if there's a particular setup you need for Retro Bat, I've already covered it. I've been doing this for about a year now for Retro Bat, so I've got plenty of Retro Bat content, Retro Arch content, launch boxes and so on standalone emulators you name it i've pretty much done it so i'm gonna call this the ultimate freelance edition and if you know what i'm saying and i'm saying this to adults out there there's a thing going around at the moment that somebody can uh accept someone's success in um anyways if you know what i'm saying by freelance you know what i'm saying so we're gonna get on with this so amstrad gx 4000 major flop a bit like the commodore gs or commodore game system uh this is quite likely alan sugars or shall i say sir alan sugars attempts to grab some extra money during that console era of the early 1990s so what we're gonna do is go up to the retro back shortcut open file location and from here we're going to go to bat gui first and just here it's going to pop up the bat gui window of course if we just click on system list and at the top you're going to find system if you just drop this down now if you don't see this please 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 follow my initial setup guys for retro bat it's likely going to be direct x installation you're missing or visual c plus plus either way if you don't see this follow that setup guide and like i say retro bat it's got its own playlist on my channel. So for this, this isn't going to be listed as Amstrad GX4000, but just simply GX4000. And here it is. So our extensions for this system is uh, very similar to Amstrad CPC. We got DSK, even .m3u, uh, .cpr, .zip, and .7zip. Now, let me remind you that if you do have .7zips, and the contents of that zip don't hold these particular files, it's not going to load. So for example, if I've got a zip folder of a game and it's got .dsk inside that zip, it's going to run really well. So also supported in a retro back through retro arch, we have the awesome Cap32, also known as Caprice32, which is a great standalone emulator, which I've also covered on my channel. So now we know which file extensions we need and how this is going to run, we are going to drop a game into our ROMs folder and just drag this down and again we're going to find GX4000 and here we are. Now just here I've got Batman the Movie which was obviously a cassette release initially, probably on floppy disk too, but we also had a version of this exclusively for the Amstrad GX4000. But this was the issue with GX4000, it couldn't really offer anything else than what the CPC version could. So we're going to drag this into my ROMs GX4000 folder and let's open up RetroBat. So we can now see we've got Amstrad GX4000 up here within RetroBat and of course this is Toki. If we go inside of here, so let's grab some artwork for this first. So main menu by pressing start, I'm going to go down to scraper and just go to scrape now. Okay, scraping finish, update game list to apply changes. If we go to game settings, update game list and just press on yes. And here we go. So if you've seen that very briefly, we got the original Amstrad GX 4000 plastic case, almost sort of like a clam case. Now what I'm gonna do is go to view options by pressing select, advanced system options. 
and as we can see here this is literally running from cat 32 retro watch core so you won't get emulators at the top to swap and change like you do with most systems inside a retro bat using retro arch so right now what i'm going to do with this is just run this as standard And there we go we can see that's running really fine so which we can also see if you're new to amstrad gx 4000 uh, especially if you're in america or most other places in the world you might not have heard of the gx 4000 but this is what i mean when this released in the very early 1990s around 1990 the gx 4000 initially released it was competing against uh, consoles which was very popular at the time such as the original 1985 Nintendo NES or even the Sega Master System. Uh, the hardware inside the GX4000 uh, to my knowledge simply couldn't compete with it but that was the time. So we're going to go back to view options, advanced system options under shader set. We've got lots of different shaders to play with. If you're new to shaders, what these are going to do is make our games look a bit different. Now, for example, if I put this one on curvature, check this one out. But just remember, if we do use shaders, then most of the time you're going to want to turn decorations off. If we go to the bottom, we'll find default unglazed. And we got that GX4000 console uh, decoration on the side. So what I'm going to do is turn this one to none. And also something else to consider with games from this era, most of these games, if not probably 99% of them, were released for 4x3 aspect ratio. So if you go to something like 16x9 or full, or maybe even custom, you're going to find your games are going to be very stretched. So just make sure if you want the best look on these games, just go for auto or 4x3. Uh, integer scaling, we can turn this on or just leave it to auto, that's going to turn it on anyway. And what that's going to do is just clean up the pixelation around the edges. Vertical Sync, now there's particular games on the GX4000, a game called Burning Rubber, which was actually a packing game with the GX4000 at the time. It's a racing game and it was exclusive for the GX4000 as a selling point. Now Vertical Sync takes away screen tear, especially with 3D moving images, racing games for example. So just make sure Vertical Sync is put to yes. Now under video we got some really interesting options to use just here. If we go to force full screen, we can force the full screen, but like I say, try and make these as small as possible, hence the 4x3 aspect ratio, otherwise your image is going to be stretched and it's not going to look right at all. We've also got a few other options at the bottom, colour depth, we can enhance the colours on this by putting it to 24 bit. Now if you've got an HDR compatible screen that you're using, this core actually supports HDR, so just make sure that's turned on. And if we come back out, go to visual rendering, video filters. Again, we got a lot of filters here we can use, including scan lines. So just play around with these options and see what looks best for your GX4000 collection. Uh, smooth games by linear filtering, just like integral scaling, this is going to clean up pixelation around the edges and also compress the image. Now, if we go to monitor type, of course, the Amstrad line of computers were sold with a color monitor and a green monitor. Now, to my knowledge, I'm not sure what a white is, but certainly here in the UK, the differences was color and green. But we'll look at those in a minute. And under monitor intensity, we can obviously change the settings if we want to put green mode on. And if we go right to the bottom, or rather near the bottom, under emulation and model type, you're going to find here a series of different Amstrad computer models. So we got the 6128, the 664, the 464, and the 6128 plus. 
So for Amstrad GX 4000 games, this needs to be put onto 6128 plus. And under RAM size, we can go up to 576 kilobyte of RAM. So if you've got a game and it needs this type of RAM, which I wouldn't imagine it would, but if it does, then obviously select the relevant RAM size here. So if we come back out, As you can see the image has changed but if we actually go to advanced system options now and we put this aspect ratio to something like full it's going to be enhanced more it's going to be a more of a four picture but you're also going to notice that it's going to stretch Anyways, as to me, that don't look so great, but that's up to you. And what I'm going to show you finally is let's go old school on this monochrome. Uh, decorations, I'm actually going to set this to none again. Game aspect ratio, I'm going to just drop this to 4x3 so it's not that stretched. And of course, under visual rendering, we have got monitor type, and this is where we can change it into that green monochrome color, or by auto, it selects color. Let's go for green. So with these new settings in place and the monochrome screen monitor, let's check this one out this time. Okay, so for those of you for a real nostalgic buzz and you had a green screen monochrome monitor as a kid, we can make this look even more nostalgic through. So advanced system options. And if we go up to shader set, what we're gonna do is apply some scan lines. as we know we can also add to the intensity of that by going back to advanced system options visual rendering and monitor intensity currently i've set this to 12 brighter but like we know we got a different range of options there so let's try 15 brightest So that's it for today's Retrobat Amstrad GX 4000 Freelance Edition video. And look, I say the sort of video, if you understand the freelance joke, then you understand it. But for those a bit confused, then I totally get it. But anyways, if you enjoyed what you've seen today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming Retrobat content, plus other emulation content that I cover on my channel. Also, feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.